Hi everyone. The flathead Harley-Davidson engine saw the light of day in 1930 and can be found in Germany mostly in WLA models, which were left behind by the U.S. Army after the Second World War. Successors are the later developed knucklehead, 1936-47, parallel built, and the penhead from 1948. The Thunderbike exhibition is a bit richer, a 1942 WLA flathead is now also part of our historical collection. As early as 1938. Harley-Davidson had the idea of producing military machines against the political background. So that Harley-Davidson could do the business. In 1940, the U.S. Army ordered the first 745 units of a military version of the WL, the WLA, with revised front fork, aluminum cylinder heads, crash bars, saddle and rifle bag. The performance of the 250 kg heavy machine was 23.5 horsepower at 4,600 revolutions per minute. From this model, about 88,000 copies were produced between 1940 and 1945, making the WLA one of Harley-Davidson's most popular models. The V-engine, which became known as the Flathead, was a side-mounted variant of the Harley-Davidson in various variations, later produced in large quantities for the military until 1948. An extreme old school bike? That would be the first one for us. But then we'd take one, that's the real McCoy, a flathead, nobody in Germany has ever customized one before, and we happened to have one standing around in the shop. We took the poor old thing apart, and used some used parts to define the style we wanted, extremely narrow, with the tank high up in the air, so the engine would be clearly visible, a narrow T or Z handlebar, tall and skinny wheels, like we think a chopper for a rockabilly should look. Our tires of choice would, of course, be the Firestones, with their zigzag profile. The rims we used are similar in style to the ones used on the Softail Custom, or the Deluxe, they're not old school at all, just look that way. The only problem was, that these are only available in a 16 or 21 size, so we had to machine the rear rim from a rather large piece of billet alloy, we choose the 4,5 by 18 size. Much to our horror, the battle scars of 67 years on the road appeared. Basically what was left of the frame and fork was ripe to be chunked, as some bodged up accident repairs really left their mark on the parts. So we put the frame in our frame jig, and exchanged all the tubes between the cast parts. The good thing about this exercise was, that we had a chance to narrow the section of the frame around the seat, and cover the parts around the seat post. We put in a lot of extra effort to work on the frame, just as builders would have done in days long gone. We made the peanut tank even narrower, by making the sides curved in. The side-mounted tank fuel tap were closed, and refitted in a different place. The oil tank had to be made from scratch, also with curved sides to match the gas tank, and sloped, to fit the frame. As we put the bike together again, it turned out the front fork now was too wide for the bike, so we bought a DKW fork on eBay. This fork however was a little unstable for this bike, so we only used the mechanical suspension parts, and made the rest ourselves. As Ingo put on the base coat I took some pictures and sent them to Armand Dobstetter of Custom Leathers. I told him about the BBO, and asked him to come up with a seat, we gave him carte blanche. The first time we saw the seat was at the BBO, truly a piece of art. Meanwhile, back at the shop, the ongoing process of the build went on, SU carburetor, magneto, nuts and bolt, skulls, bullet fuel tap, etc. And nothing in chrome. Whenever parts were delivered in chrome, we dechromed them and had them nickel plated. Thanks for watching.